Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to see you all out. Apologies for the delay there, but um, as we begin our service this morning, let's turn to some words of Scripture, um, turning to the Psalms, um, one Psalm in particular that reminds us that our God is the Lord of all goodness, the shepherd who leads, provides, and promises that one day we will dwell with him forever. Psalm 23. Let me read it for us. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's just open with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We praise you for your goodness and love towards your people, how you provide for every need, And comfort us when we need comfort. Pray that this morning you would fill us with with joy as we worship Jesus, our good shepherd. Amen. So as we begin our service, I would just invite you to stand um, as we begin by uh, singing our first hymn this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's stand and sing together.
as we uh, continue on with our service, um, we come to the confession of sins. So if you look in your service sheet, um, I will say the, the words in normal print, and we all can say the words in bold together. Lord God, our Maker and our Redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and have failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. And we are assured of God's forgiveness um, as we look to 1 John chapter 1, and verse 9. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So as we continue with our service, I'd just like to invite Caitlin to come on up. Um, many of you don't know Caitlin, um, which is why I've invited her along this morning, just so all of you get to know her a little bit better, um, because she's been with us for a year now um, online, and she's helped, been helping out with Youth Fellowship over the past year um, with myself and Ryan. So um, Caitlin, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, you know, where you're from and what you're doing at the moment. Yeah, yep. this works okay. Uh, I'm from Tantrabee and at the minute I'm just helping out with the church near my home and you know, job searching and um, trying to get my driver's license. So those two things are on the go. <laughs> very good, very good. Um, and like many of us here today, um, you're a follower of Jesus. Um, and so tell us briefly, you know, where, where, the, where did you make that commitment um, and why did you make that commitment to follow Christ? Um, so none of my family are Christians, so I'm only Christian in my household, um, but in my dad's generation my auntie was saved, she was a Christian, and I was very close with her, and um, I kind of believed in God, because as a kid I would read stuff, <laughs> that I would pray, and then I would find it again, so in my mind, okay, God's real, <laughs> but I didn't really know what to do with that, so uh, I decided to visit my auntie, because I wanted to see what her church was like, and she asked me if I was saved, and I asked her, what do you mean by that? <laughs> and she said, uh, she explained it, and then I decided to get saved because I knew that Jesus made me happy and I wanted to be in a relationship with him. Yeah, that's great. Um, and you've just finished the, your first year of Bible college. Um, God's led you to Bible college, and you've just finished your first year. And so tell us, you know, what, what have you found challenging about that and <laughs> encouraging as well? Well, um, I think doing college in COVID was quite challenging because it was quite isolating at times mm -hmm. and I could feel quite lonely. Um, but the best thing about it was um, just the people and having like being challenged. The teachers were great at helping you figure out what you believe and helping you challenge beliefs that weren't always so good, but mm -hmm. also helping you develop and like see the beauty of Christianity and different things about God, which is like one of my favourite things. That's great, that's great. And over the past year, as I said before, you've been helping us in Youth Fellowship as you, you've been doing your placement with us um, over the past year. And it's been great to get to know you. It's been great um, to see you grow um, over the past year. And um, I'm sure the youth are really happy to see you here this morning as well because you haven't seen them in person yet. Um, it's all been <laughs> online. And so um, it's great to have you here. Um, and how have you found the experience with us um, the past year? All you guys, like these are um, great friends for me. And when I was struggling with uni, it was just so nice to come to Maya, even if it was online, and just have fun and listen to their laugh and just learn about God. It was just really refreshing. Well, thank you, thank you for helping out this year. You've been really a great help. And um, finally, just how can we pray for you um, this morning? Um, so maybe just pray prayer for finding a new job and pray that God would use me where I am right now. Well, let me pray for you now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Caitlin. We thank you, Lord, for bringing her to us and um, for her placement um, with us in Youth Fellowship. 
we just pray, Lord, um, that you would help her to be a great witness um, for her family, for her friends, um, who maybe don't know you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would help her um, just with um, the driving lessons and help her, Lord, with um, her degree as well as she moves forward into her second year um, and onwards. Um, but just be with her today, Lord, um, and help her um, just to get to know a lot of us here this morning. Um, so we just pray and lift her up to you this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. So thank you, Caitlin. So as we continue on, um, let me just bring us a few wee notices um, for this morning. Actually, no, first off, we're going to sing <laughs> the song of the Trinity. So let's, let's stand and sing um, our children's song for this morning. Just a few uh, notices now um, for us today. First off, um, the gift day we had, um, the amount raised for that uh, was £8,818. Um, next Sunday, uh, we have praise and prayer on the front lawn, and that will be at 7pm. Other we, uh, announcements to make. Um, the first one is a wee reminder again about the youth outings for the youth fellowship. There's wee flyers down the back if you haven't got one of those. Um, but there's three outings that we're planning to go on in the summer. So something to look forward to for the youth. Um, also, for the children of primary school age, we have our Holiday Bible Club. Um, and that is on the 5th, 6th and 7th of July from 11am to 1pm. And so it's a fantastic opportunity uh, for the kids to get involved in and the registration forms are like this one and they're down at the back if you haven't got one yet and so if you would like to bring your child to that and um, if you fill that out as soon as possible because there's limited spacing available for that um, 
Also, just afterwards, uh, finally, we are having a picnic in the park. And so if you'd like to come and maybe you forgot your picnic, you can always pop off at uh, the spa or somewhere, get a wee bite um, and come to Cherryvale where we'll be having a wee picnic, casual picnic. Um, and so as we continue on, let us turn um, to God in prayer. Um, I'm just going to invite Sarah, um, Andrea and Stephen up um, just as we begin our prayer for the youth and children this morning. Prayer for protection. Heavenly Father, we praise you that you are fully in control of all things. We pray that you would protect our children and youth at St. Jude's. Keep them healthy and help them to thrive. Thank you that you know every hair on their head. You know exactly when they rise and when they fall. Watch over our children and youth in every area of their lives and keep them safe, we pray. Amen. Loving Father, we give you thanks for our schools. As they look ahead, please grant them encouragement, wisdom and peace. Strengthen teachers with heavy workloads. May they be firm yet patient and encouraging to our young people, forgiving their mistakes. We pray our children and youth, who are all at different stages of development, some who will be moving to secondary school, and some who are at GCSE and A-level, and even those who are at university. Whatever point they are at in their education, we pray that you would help prepare them for the year ahead, and to help them rest when they can. We pray for your comfort to rest upon them, as if they have any anxiety or worry about exam results and help us to support them as their church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Prayer for spiritual growth. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you give the promise of the Holy Spirit to all who believe in you. Lord, if any of our young people do not know you, we pray that through the work of your Holy Spirit, we would open their eyes to the truth and that they would believe in you. We pray for the young people who are your followers. Continue to work in their hearts and draw them closer to yourself this day and the years ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. And finally, a prayer for our young people's mental health. Heavenly Father, we know that you are a God of love and compassion, the good shepherd who takes care of your sheep. We pray, Lord, for your abundant love and compassion to rest upon our young people. Help them in times where they may feel lost, sad, anxious, or afraid. We pray that in those times you would draw close to them and your light would shine into their darkness. Help us also as a church to be, to be ones who provide an ear to listen, a shoulder to cry on, and a mouth to give godly advice through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. And just as we conclude our time of prayer together, I would just like to invite you to um, pray the Lord's Prayer with me as found on your service sheets, um, beginning with our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'd just like to invite Zach now to come up. Uh, Zach is our guest speaker this morning, and he's also the person I live with um, in Belfast. Where am I going so, over here? Yes, you want to go over here, man? Absolutely. Um, so, Zach, tell us a wee bit about yourself, um, where you're from, and what do you do at the moment? Okay, I'm from originally from Annalong. I'm sure you all know it really well. Um, just near Newcastle there, 
and I moved to Belfast because I got work in Belfast. I'm a teacher in Dundonald. I teach in a special needs school. Absolutely love it. Um, I live with Jason in Belfast, and that's probably all the information you need, isn't it? Yeah, that's fantastic. Great. So, uh, Zach, I'm going to leave leave you to it. Um, all right, okay. You, you work away, and fantastic. When you need me, I'll be over here. You'll be over there. Yes. Great. Well, listen. Let me grab a bag. Um, it's always great whenever a guest speaker brings a bag. There's so many wonderful things inside. Now, I borrowed this bag from Jason, so look at the state of it. Gives you a wee insight into him. Um, yes, I live with Jason, and he tells me so many wonderful things about St. Jude's. He talks about you all the time, so I'm here to tell you not so wonderful things about Jason. I'm only joking. I'll be nice. I will be nice. Um, so let's get started. Um, I've forgotten my Bible. My Bible's over here. Bibles are great when you're doing a Bible talk. Um, question. Take your mask off. You're not asked to do that very often. Very good. Oh, feels good. Question for you all. Hands up who loves surprises? Who loves a good surprise? I love a surprise. I love surprises so much I actually asked Jason last year to throw me a surprise party for my birthday because I just love surprises. And surprises are so good because they're so unexpected. You don't expect them. They just happen. And you're like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. And they're so exciting. Um, I, I, I knew this singer. In fact, Jason, you sing all the time. Could you come up for me? Um, I need a singer. Let me see, where could we put you? If you could just stand there for me, and you're going to lead the congregation in a song for me, because something unexpected is about to happen. Just stand there for me. <laughs> Fantastic. So, remember, unexpected, surprises, they're exciting, and something very exciting is going to happen now, isn't it, Jason? <laughs> oh, you're singing. You'll know when it happens. You'll just know what song to sing. Go inside the bag here. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh. Oh. Shaky hands. It's not good when you're carrying a flame. Okay, Jason, are you ready? I'm kind of three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Peter. Happy birthday to you. Peter, happy birthday. Oh my goodness. You'll have to do the, the COVID blow out the candle. Way! Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Oh, Peter, thank you, Jason. That's your job done. Peter, that was so unexpected. But it, mainly because it's not your birthday. Sure it's not. But it was so unexpected, but even more so unexpected, I got you a present. A wee gift, just a wee card to say happy birthday. Okay? But listen, don't open it yet. Okay? Keep it on your person. Don't let anyone touch it. Don't let me touch it. That's for you. But don't open it just yet. Happy birthday, Peter. So unexpected and such a surprise. And I love unexpected things. And you know what? This book, this Bible is full of unexpected stories. It's packed full. You know, we think about David. Do you remember David, the little shepherd boy? He was small. He was young. He was weak. And yet he was able to defeat the biggest, tallest, most giant, powerful, strong, Philistine soldier with a pebble and a slingshot. It was so unexpected. Or think about Jonah. Do you remember Jonah? God told him to go one way and he went the exact opposite way. But what did God do? He sent a massive fish to swallow him and bring him to where he wanted him to go. It was so unexpected. But I want to talk about the man in the Bible that actually said the most unexpected things and did the most unexpected things, and his name is Jesus. That's who I want to talk about today. 
And you know, in John chapter 2, um, he does something really unexpected. Really unexpected. In John chapter 2. And I actually need another helper. Come on up, Jason. He loves being at the front. Come on up. Jesus does something very unexpected in John chapter 2. Let me give you the context of what's happening. I'll read the first few verses. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you to do. So, J- so Jason, Jason, where will I have you? Jason, could you stand here for me? So there, picture the scene. The wine has run out. Jesus' mum has said, Jesus, you need to do something about this. And he says, she says to the servants, do whatever Jesus tells you to do. And Jesus gathered the servants together and they had big jars, didn't they, Jason? Big, massive jars that were used for cleansing. And he said to them, what did he say, Jason? Fill them with water. Fill them with water. So Jason, what I have, I don't have big jars, Jason. But in my bag, you'll recognize these because they're from our cupboard. And I have, I have some water. Okay, so these are just ordinary cups, they're not big jars, the budget didn't stretch that far. Okay, normal, you hold that one for me, Jason. Absolutely fantastic, and listen. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, right up to the brim. Fill them up. Do you want to drink, Jason? Okay. Fill up the jars. Jason, could you take this cup of water and just hold it like this? Okay? Yeah. Just above your head. And listen, so we're all doing the same thing. I'll do the same thing. Okay? So remember, we're talking about unexpected things. Jesus did unexpected things all the time. And at this wedding, he was about to do something very Unexpected. And something unexpected is going to happen. Okay? So what we're going to do, Jason and I, we're going to close our eyes and we need you all to count down from ten. Can you do that? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay, Jason, close your eyes. Okay? And everybody count down from ten. Ten. Nine. Just open your eyes. So remember the story. We were at a wedding in Cana. They ran out of wine. Jesus said, fill the jars with water. And they brought out the jars and they started pouring it out. And something so unexpected happened because it wasn't water. It was wine. (laughs) It was so unexpected. But do you know what? The story doesn't stop there because something else unexpected happened. (laughs) Because the master of the feast came to the bridegroom and he said, most people use the best wine at the start, but you have saved the best wine to last. So not only did the water turn into wine, but it was actually the best wine it ever tasted. So Jason, if you could just hold that cup above your head and on the count of three, turn it over. One, two, three. Oh, it was so unexpected. Big clap for Jason. Absolutely fantastic. Well done. Jason, they were all expecting something else to happen there. (laughs) And nobody tried to stop it happening. It's supposed to be a church. My goodness me. It was so unexpected. And as I said, Jesus has done and said so many unexpected things in this book. I could go on and on and on about healing people's legs, healing people's eyes, feeding 5,000 people with just little bits of food, raising a man from, from the dead. He actually raised him back to life. 
He did so many unexpected things. But the one thing I really want to tell you that he did was so unexpected. Let me just tell you exactly what he came to do. He came down from heaven. Now, let's think about that for a wee second. He was in heaven being worshipped every single day, somewhere where there was complete peace and joy, no suffering, no pain, and came to this earth for a very specific purpose. Because whenever he got to this earth, he lived an absolutely sinless life. He did not sin, ever. He didn't even have one bad day of a bad attitude. He never sinned. But what Jesus did was he looked at us, he looked at all of us, and seen our sin. Because we are sinful. But he looked at our sin and knew that if we still had this sin inside of us, he couldn't be with us. We couldn't live forever in the presence of God. We can't live in heaven in a place where sin cannot be because we're so full of sin. So rather than doing the expected thing, which would be actually to come down and just destroy us, he did the unexpected thing and came down and let us destroy him. He took the punishment for our sin. He took our sin and put it on himself and died on a cross. So that our sin can completely be taken away and we can live forever with him in a place where sin does not exist. And then three days later, he did something even more unexpected. He rose again. He came back to life. So not only do we have a king that actually can take all of our sin away, we have a king that actually is alive and walks with us every single day, who we can talk to every single day, who we can be in the presence of in our bedroom as we sit and we read our Bible, we can be with Jesus every single day. It is absolutely amazing. I want to finish with one more story. One more story whenever Jesus was calling his disciples. You know the way he had 12 disciples? Well, he had to call them all to himself. So I'll tell you what, Peter... Can you come up? I'm going to call you to the front. Bring your birthday card. And you can stand beside me here. Because there's a, in John chapter 1, there's a passage whenever Jesus is calling his disciples, specifically Philip and Nathaniel. And Nathaniel, he's just there. He's outside. He's chilling under a fig tree, just relaxing. And his friend Philip comes to him and he says, you need to come with me. You need to come see this guy, Jesus, because he's pretty incredible. He's doing so many unexpected things. You need to come and see him. And so Philip and Nathaniel walk, and as they're walking towards Jesus, Jesus says, Aha! Nathaniel, an Israelite indeed, a man in whom there is no deceit. And Nathaniel is, is looking at Jesus and go, How does he know who I am? Jesus, how do you know who I am? And Jesus says, Nathaniel, I knew you before Philip called you whenever you were sitting under the fig tree. And Nathaniel goes, how did you know I was sitting under the fig tree? You really are the son of God. You are who you say you are. And Jesus looks at him and goes, really? That's all it took? All I had to tell you was I saw you under the fig tree and you believed. Nathaniel, you are going to see so much more amazing things. But it's strange, isn't it? It always feels weird whenever somebody knows something about you or knows something they shouldn't or couldn't know. That's really weird, isn't it, Peter? When somebody knows something that they shouldn't really know. And so I'm going to hopefully try and do that now. With, with our friend Peter. I'm going back into my bag because in my bag, if I've remembered, I have my little notebook. And in this notebook, I like to write down verses. 
because I'm somebody that often forgets. I'm someone that needs reminded of the Bible all the time. And so in this notebook, there's loads of different verses. It's just absolutely full of verses. We have, what's that, Genesis 1, 1, Romans 12, 2. Peter, do you want to read some of them out? It's full. It's absolutely full of verses. Absolutely full. And so what I'm going to get Peter to do is to choose a verse. He's going to choose a verse that will finish this talk. So Peter, please make sure it links into what we're talking about. But he's going to choose. Okay? So Peter, you can put your card down for now. If you put your hand out flat, I'm going to put this in your hand. You can sanitize afterwards. And then put your other hand on top. Okay, don't let me see it. Don't let me see which verse you're going to pick. But just with your thumb, I want you, you're going to lift it up. Don't change it after you've picked it. Look at it, memorize it, and close it shut for me. You got it? Okay, you can just throw the, bit, the notepad down. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so you have a book of the Bible, you have the chapter, and you have the verse. Okay? And I already know what book of the Bible is in his head, what chapter and what verse. So I tell you what, Peter, go ahead and tell everybody what book, what chapter and what verse. It's Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. I knew it! I knew it! I absolutely knew it. Do you believe me? No. We'll tell you what. Why don't you go ahead and open up your birthday card, Peter? And read out your lovely birthday card. <clears throat> to Peter, happy birthday, even though it's not. Thank you for letting me speak at St. Jude today, love, Zach. P.S. You will choose the verse. Matthew 24. Verse 44, which says, So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Thank you, Peter. That is a crazy verse. Thanks so much, and happy birthday. Matthew 24, verse 44. It tells us that Jesus has one more unexpected thing to do. He has one more unexpected event up his sleeve, and that is to come back to this earth. He is coming back. Now, he told us that. We can expect that. But he says, you don't know the time, you don't know the day, and you do not know the date. Which means Jesus could literally come right now as I'm speaking. He could come tomorrow when you're eating your breakfast. He could come next when you're sitting in school when you're sitting in work he is coming back and Jesus is saying to you prepare, be ready because I'm coming at a very unexpected time and so the question for you today as we finish are you ready? if he was to come back right now would you be ready? a hard question would you be ready and you know if there's sin still in your life if you in your life that you know you need to deal with go to the cross remember what we said he did the unexpected and took all our sin away so go to the cross if you have doubts in your head whether or not actually I don't even believe know if I believe Jesus is who he said he was John, the man that wrote the Gospel of John, says, read it. Read this book because I wrote all these signs down for the purpose that you might believe that he is the Son of Man and in his name have life. And so if you have doubts, get this book out and start reading and reading and reading and reading and reading. But maybe actually you've never gave your life. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. Or maybe you said a prayer years and years and years and years ago, but actually you never actually made Jesus Lord of your life. Jesus is saying to you today, be prepared. Get ready. Because I am preparing a table 
I am preparing a feast up in heaven and I want you there. He has done absolutely everything possible to make sure you are there with him after he comes back. And so my prayer for you as a church, my prayer for you individually, is that you do something unexpected today, and that is to give your life to Jesus. So can I pray for you? As all of that is going in your head and your heart, let me pray. Dear Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you so much that you are someone who came to this earth and did the unexpected you looked at us who were your enemies and rather than destroying us you came and you died for us why because you want to be with us you looked at us and loved us so much that you didn't want to see us go but you want to spend eternity with us and so lord i pray for saint jude's and for these people they will do something unexpected today and just give absolutely everything to you their life and their own so Lord, be with us the rest of this day, I pray, and may we be ready. May we be people that whenever you return won't try and hide from you or try and shrink back, but we will be people that look at you and are, lift our hands and worship because we are so happy you have come back and we will get to sit and eat at your table in heaven. So Lord, we thank you so much and we praise your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Zach, um, for that Bible talk. Um, as you know, today is Children's Day. Today is celebrate um, our children and youth. And so um, the church have very kindly um, bought the children who are with us um, a little book. So I have a trolley of gifts here that um, I will bring out now. So I'll bring it around the corner here. Got a lovely trolley here um, with wee gifts on it for the children and the youth. And so, if one of the family members would like to come out and collect, I'll call you up one at a time. So, what about the hawk? Up first. One of the hawks would like to come up and get their wee gift. Hello, Liam. So, this is your wee one here. So, you want to pick that up? Just open it to make sure. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, and that's your brother's balloon there. So do you want to take that one too? Lovely. Oh. There you go, Liam. What about the Giovannis? Do you want to, does one of you want to come up? So all the youth last year got an engaged youth Bible. They're getting the wee devotional readings. So that, that's all yours there. It's the Mope, the Mola, and Ios. No problem. What about the Blackburns? Blackburns like to come up. And here's Naomi coming. Which one? So Naomi, that's your wee pile there for Joshua and Hannah there. And yourself. There you go. There you go. What about the jacks? Did the jacks like come up? That's okay, we can get them after, that's okay. Um, who else? The Burks. Do you, one of the Burks want to come up? All, all two of them here. Here we go. So that's your wee pile there. Do you want to take? There you go. And who else do we have? Um, Emily. Got yours and looks. There you go, Emily. There's your and looks devotionals. And Cameron, you want to come on up? Come on up, Cameron. I can tell you're excited. No, I think this is your one. Yeah, there you go. There's yours and your sister's there. So there you go, well, Anna. I love a wee book for you. 
And if you ever have missed, if there's anybody else, come think. Oh, there's Thyro down the back. I'll get yours after, Thyro. But um, yes, happy Children's Day. Um, I hope you, all the children enjoy those books. And for any of them who didn't come, I will be delivering them next week. So yes, um, happy Children's Day to all of you. And um, let me just check um, what is next. Um, yes, before we, just, before we stand to sing our final hymn, I'd just like to thank everybody who has helped out with Little Stars, with Kids Zone, with Youth Zone, with Youth Fellowship. Um, you've all been a fantastic help this year, and it's been a very challenging year, and I just want to say thank you so much. Um, you've been a really great support to me, um, and it's been great to have you with the kids and the youth. Um, and as well, for everybody who prays for the children's and youth ministries, I just want to thank you as well. Um, your prayers um, are so appreciated, and so thank you so much for that. Um, and for everybody who's helping out with Holy Bible Club this year, but thank you all so much. And do pray for the Holy Bible Club um, that many will come and hear the gospel. Um, and so I just want to say thank you um, before uh, we stand to sing. But now let, let us stand to sing um, our final hymn, O oh, Praise the Name.
Thank you all for coming this morning. I um, really appreciate all of you's coming. It's great to see you all. Let us just close with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, be with us as we leave this place. Help us to go forth into the world in peace, to be of good courage, to hold fast that which is good, and render to no one evil for evil. Help us strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. To the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, be all glory and honour and praise. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth and in our lives as believers. In the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So thank you all for coming and um, Picnic in the Park is afterwards. You're more than welcome everyone to come. Um, but have a lovely day and hope to see you soon.